Mobbing with that broomstick, get your shit swept. Killers on call with that trigger finger flex. Certified goons, we ain't banging on the net. Hawk your ass down for that color that you rep. Post it in the lab, trying to make a hit while I'm trying to get. Hey, what's going on with everybody, man? I hope everybody's having a blessed day, being productive. And remember, it's one life, one chance. We only got one chance to do this right, so let's get it done, man. I appreciate everybody's support. I finally reached 5,000 subscribers, and that's a blessing in itself. So I want to thank everybody that's been showing me support and sharing my uh, content and just showing me love. That's why I do, I do my best when I find the time to answer everybody in the comment sections, answer your guys' questions as thoroughly as I possibly can and when, I, when the time permits. You know, you guys have helped me create something for myself that I enjoy to do every day and look forward to making it into some type of uh, career out of this. So you guys giving me a lot more options in life to pursue. So thank you guys. If you guys haven't already did it, like, subscribe, share, and hit that like button. Though, but hit that like button and uh, leave a comment, bro. Like I do my best to respond to everybody. And don't forget about the membership program. I uploaded two music videos and a, and a song that YouTube wouldn't really let me release publicly. So it's in there as well. And then I'm going to be uploading photos, you know, other videos of me in the studio. So, you know, just give it a shot, man. I'm doing my best to keep you guys entertained as much as possible. With that being said, and uh, there's a couple of uh, questions that I have to uh, answer. I'm going to answer them within the next few days. But this one in particular, he asked me, how come people just don't write it out on the main lines? And, you know, and why do, why do you think people go to SNY so much instead of defending their case or, you know, writing it out? Here's the thing. I can't speak on behalf of the, the Sureño faction because I don't know too much other than what my cellies tell me. But I can only speak on behalf of the Norteño faction. So that's the only best way I'm going to give you the, the, an accurate answer. See, the thing is, right, politics come into play a lot. And believe it or not, favoritism is what destroys a lot of people's lives and careers. And it's sad to say, like, a lot of my cellies were Sureños, ex-Sureños. And they used to always tell me about mutinies and uh, how the L.A. car would go against the San Diego car or the Orange County car, the, the IE car. You know, oftentimes I've seen prison systems and yards governed by the Sureño faction to where most of the appointed members in the Mesa were from all a particular car. But then you got to remember, you got a handful of individuals working for this carnal in the back. Then you got a handful of individuals working for this carnal in the back. And they're both fighting for the same yard. And every, all these soldados, these Sureños, they're, they're caught in the midst of this uh, political struggle over power and money that their lives get destroyed in the process because they have to follow suit to what this elder has said, these demands, these orders. So while they're fighting each other, slaughtering each other for the positions of powers that to control that yard on behalf of this Emmett member, these guys are in the back, which are still gonna fight over that yard. While these Sudanians are hurting one another, when they're one of the biggest factions, biggest cars, on each and every yard in the penal system, they have probably the biggest control of over every prison system. They, they could do great things with their numbers, but because of all the political struggles that take, take place in the shoe, now that they're out, now that they're, this might be a different story, but back then when I was, uh, this is the main subject of the stories that I used to always hear myself say, man, this guy not wanted this yard, so we had to fight these Sudanians, we had to get rid of them, or if an MM member falls out of grace, and you know, he's deemed no good and he's put on disregard, then those that work for him automatically get replaced and removed without probable cause most of the time. It's just because they don't want these individuals to actually continue to fight on behalf of this man. So they do that probably to sustain the power that they took from this man and make sure that his soldiers don't help him regain that sense of power again. So they remove him. And I think it's sad because at the end of the day, we work for these individuals. You know, we do right by them. You know, we're fulfilling their will, and yet we get slaughtered in the midst of their arrogancy and their political standpoints against one another when they call each other brothers. See, a lot of these gangs are based on brotherhood, you know, and the struggle and the movement. But then when money and power comes into play, you know, I think it triggers every man's mind frame that greed, instilling fear, and control over the people is like the main objective, is the moral obligation and goal for themselves, not for their gente, but for themselves. These men, hang, these men will never come home, so this is all they have. So they want it all. They want, they want to be the scarface of the yards, and that's sad because you know everybody else is losing their careers over it. 
And even if it ain't on behalf of the padrinos, it's more or less like a lot of individuals get into positions of powers and the haterism comes into effect, jealousy comes into effect. And, you know, because like I've always said, it becomes a popularity contest where we start hating one another just to get rid of people so they don't infringe or affect our business transactions, our positions of power. Everything that I've seen so far about removals in jail is, has always been over the positions of power. That's something that we just continuously fight over and fight for in jail. Because that's what, that's what the political arena has established itself to become is individuals striving for power. And that's been destroying a lot of people's lives in the process. But like I said, I can't speak on too much of the Sureño faction. That's just always what I heard. It was always this carnal versus this carnal, his soldados versus his soldados. And I used to trip out on that. Like, man, that's because I know the, 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 the Sureño faction doesn't have a lot of rules like we do. And uh, when it comes to the Norteños, we're talking about household policies, yard policies, educational policies, block policies. There's so much rules and regulations, codes of conduct to follow that sometimes you're walking on a, on a narrow path to where you don't, if you follow this rule, uh, these rules, you kind of tend to forget about these rules. And then when you break those rules to them, there's no room for error. There's no room for mistakes. You're going to be held accountable. Because lack of knowledge when it comes to our educational proceedings, our teachings, or our policies and procedures, if you don't follow every single thing to a T, you will be held accountable for them severely. They don't, they don't believe in errors. They don't believe in making mistakes. They don't believe ignorance should be excuse of the law. You break it, you pay for it. And a lot of homies got tired of just living under that type of governments. It, it's kind of it kind of sucks because you don't know you don't know what you can and can't do most of the time because you, you you don't have that much leeway to do as you please and enjoy your program because if you break certain rules it, it is, you're bound to you're bound to either be disciplined on a consistent basis well I mean any grown man will get tired of being disciplined over and over again over some 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 small per policy or procedure that he forgot about that he kind of overlooked. It's one thing to do 500 burpees and stay consistently in shape and be a squad member, but to be disciplined and do another 500 burpees again right after that one, but do it for 14 days straight, your body becomes physically tired of that. And you can become mentally and physically exhausted from applying yourself so much in accordance to a discipline that's been issued to you that sometimes are justifiable. Sometimes you feel like it was unnecessary and uncalled for. And that's the things that we had to deal with. You, you're gonna break you're gonna make a mistakes we're all man we're, all, we're we're gonna make a mistake but the thing is they don't give you no warnings they don't give you no verbal corrections it's hey bro you messed up here go ahead and do this thousand burpees today for the next few days go out to go out to, to the yard and they designated an area for only individuals that are have received disciplines so they put you on blast in front of your own people I used to have to make people do 2,000 jumping jacks you know how hard that is you know what that does to the, the inner part of your legs and your back and your shoulder blades to do 2,000 push-ups on the yard. Like, you can't even go to the yard and enjoy yourself. Go mingle with friends. Go mingle with your brothers. You know, go chase businesses because we're going to tell you as soon as you're done with your burpee routine, you're going to go to the disciplinarian area and you're going to do your burpees. And you might take up your whole yard. So you can't even enjoy your own program when you become disciplined or when you get disciplined for breaking the rules. That's what I've seen about a lot of ex-Northerners that were on the SNY side. They just couldn't handle the rules. It was just way too much. Too much restrictions. And then the abuse of the CLC sometimes, some things don't get reported all the way to the top. So you got a lot of these low-level CLC position members saying, hey, we're going to discipline you for this, this, and that. It came from the top. All a Solalo can do is abide by that discipline and fulfill that order. Or how about writing a 500-word essay on a subject? But the educational department, the maestro, didn't, didn't feel like you put enough effort into it, that you did the bare minimum. So while you could be in your cell writing letters to your family, drawing, creating a hustle, enjoying your TV program, he's sending your essay back saying, hey, you got to be rooted again. And you got to work on your penmanship. It looks sloppy. Or you went outside the lines. You went across the bars on the side. Now you got to spend another two or three hours rewriting this essay in a certain time frame. And if you don't meet that time frame, then you get disciplined for being late, not turning it in on time, making the maestro work too much. People get tired of that. And then obviously I met some individuals who just said they didn't like the program. They didn't want to be part of the program. They just wanted to go 
and have as much as freedom as they possibly can and trans transition to the SNY side. Which oftentimes I don't mind what another man does, but it's like I, like I said in my last video, you know, you got to give general population a chance, man. There's so much growth and opportunity there to reshape you as a man, as a person, whether it's through the politics, whether it's through just the, the levels of respect and discipline that are in the yard. You know, you can grow as a person on general on a general population on those main lines. But a lot of people give it up. That's why a lot of people don't are not willing to fight. Because if the order came from the top to remove you, back in my time, before these new changes have taken place, after the, the, the end of hostilities, it was hard to plead your case. Because the due process, they would investigate you, ask you certain questions. But no matter what, the decision was probably pre-made. I know I made I know I made a lot of these decisions based on the 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 infractions that they caused where I just gave them the due process and then I had to exercise what bond they violated because once you violate those bonds, you know, ain't no coming back from that. Those bonds are are law. We we pride we pride ourselves in following those bonds to the exact meaning and exact interpretation of those laws. So if you break them, you're getting held accountable for them severely. And some of those bonds say this will result in serious consequences. That meaning that you're going to get stabbed over these bonds if you break them. And that's a hard thing to do because I've seen a lot of I've seen a lot of individuals come from the streets and violate bond number four just for having sex with another homie's old lady. Which on the streets, yeah, it's a bad look. You know, you can handle your business with a one on one, and you know you can, uh, you know, you can separate from your girl for her disloyalty towards you. But in jail, all that man got to do is say, "Hey, man, on the streets." He disrespected me and my family by having sex with my girl. I asked for this guy to be removed. The homies I asked you, did it happen? And if you say, yeah, I did, but that was street stuff, man. We were kids. I didn't know no better. You're still getting removed. You're getting your face sliced. In county jail, I've seen mo maybe over six or seven slicings and removals based on another man had sex with another man's girl. I actually seen a removal in county jail where an individual, he came in and we were SBing him. And at the time I was... I was a high level COC, but I wasn't in charge yet. I was still learning. And they actually put one of the SBs on him was a kid from Tulare. Him and his brother were in there. And this guy that showed up was used to date their mom years ago. They were in a relationship, almost engaged. And then they separated. And he was cool with it on the streets when he was out there drugged out, tweaked out, didn't really care what his mom was doing. But when he came, when that man came into jail and we were SBing him, I watched him from my cell, the cell of my door, slice that man's face up, saying that he wasn't trying to abide by the household policies and the SB procedures for the new arrivals. You know, he was still under the process of being screened. But I watched it with my own eyes. That dude, dude was on the phone just making a phone call. That kid didn't like him because he used to date his mom and he didn't want nobody finding out about it. So he slid his face and I watched three individuals jump him and catch a case. So when I, when I investigated it, along with the, the other brothers, that's what it came out to. He was like, nah, he tried to say that nah, he disrespected me on the phone. He wasn't listening. But I watched the whole thing and he didn't know that. So when he brought up, when he also brought up at the end, well, it doesn't matter because he, he committed violations of bond number four by having sex with my mom. We still got that kid removed. And his brother had to sit there and watch him get removed. A lot of people lose their lives over some stuff that could have been avoided. But sometimes back then, you couldn't, you didn't have no get backs. Once you, once you got your face sliced and you see your own people spilling your own blood, you got to ask yourself, man, is it really worth fighting for when they already disowned me? When they took it to that extreme to slice my face open, they gave that man 13 stitches across his lip. That's, that's something hard to come back from. But like myself, when I tell my story, I mean, I got the scars right here. I got the scar underneath right here where they put my, my teeth through my lips. And I got the scar up here where they hit me on the head. I got scars on my fingers when I try to grab the blade and they slice my fingers. I got the scar right here when they slice me right here. You know, it sucks. It sucks knowing that everything you're doing, that once you make those mistakes, there's no coming back. And then you're getting put down like a dog. So who wants to be treated like that? But I still try to fight my case, but it took my own brothers to finally make me realize and say, look, bro, don't come back, bro. It's over for you. You know, once you get that realization set in your head, you have no choice but to be a man and make a decision finally for yourself. Instead of going to the main lines and saying, I'm pleading my case. You guys make the decision whether or not I should stay or go. I don't think you should leave that decision in anybody else's hands but your own. Not discouraging anybody about the mainline politics. Like I said, I encourage people to go try them out, check them out, get involved, and learn from them. But at the end of the day, you're going to have to make decisions for yourself at some point. 
and stop letting men in the positions of power who feel like they know it all make these decisions for you. That's why a lot of people you say don't go back and try to fight their case or hog it out how everybody else puts it because you can sometimes. Sometimes the system's designed to, do, to push you away once you're gone. And they're going to make it that point. They're going to fabricate it in every way, in every fashion to say that you're no good for them, you're expendable, and that you're, a de you're detrimental to the program and the people there. That you're just going to disrupt it or you can't learn. That there, there's no use for you. You, you got to sit there and figure out if you can actually live with that idea of somebody saying that you're not good enough for them. So that's what I'm saying. Like Sometimes at the end of the day, you got you to gotta make the decision to be your own man and dictate your own life instead of letting somebody else do it all the time. I let it, I let it happen to me for seven, eight years until I got to the point where like, I felt like I couldn't get dictated. But like every man answers to somebody. And I answered for my mistakes and I answered for my sins. And I paid with them by spilling my own blood. And I have no choice but to respect that aspect that they did what they had to do to get rid of me. And it was a, I, have, I have a lot of proud moments when it comes to North Thunder struggles that I'm going to be talking about on YouTube. That's why I don't talk down on the politics because I knew what I was signing up for and I knew the rules. When you break them, you pay for them. That's what rules are for. That's the law and order that governs these societies in jail. But if you can't handle it, then obviously you have an option to go SNY in the first place. But give it a try like I give it a try. You know, that's, that's the best advice I can give you. And this is the best advice that I could provide in accordance to this question, man. People just can't fight it because sometimes you, there's, there's no fight when you're already lost, when you're up against so much rules, regulations, and individuals willing to apply them to the best of their abilities to further their own position. And that's a hard battle to fight. So with that being said, man, I hope I answered your question thoroughly. Thank you. I got to get to a couple more videos and editing processes. So thank everybody for tuning into my lives. I appreciate it. We had fun. I look forward to the, going live Wednesday again on my day off. Thank you, guys.